This video is sponsored by Grand RP. says success in the business world like a slideshow. All right, this is uh, Laszlo Show on Integrity. It's in association with Zit. If we're going to get to the underbelly of the city, you know, we should take a cab ride. Excuse me, taxi. <laughs> the GTA universe has three versions. 2D, 3D, and HD. Each takes place in their own pocket of reality. Sometimes, similarities and brands cross over from one universe to the other, but according to Rockstar, these universes are entirely separate. Which basically means CJ does not exist in GTA 5, or at least the version of him we know from San Andreas doesn't exist. Some have argued that Red Dead and GTA may be in the same universe, arguing that the differences in location names could have changed from Manhattan as referenced in Red Dead to Algonquin as referenced in GTA. The biggest clues that these universes are the same is from Madame Nazar, who is in both games, and the time traveler Francis Sinclair in Red Dead 2. I always found it interesting how GTA has three separate universes based on the technological advancements in console generations, and what engine each game was being built off of. Before I really understood it, I used to find it a little odd that they wouldn't just retcon the city designs but keep a consistent history with the interesting characters, organizations, and major events that were established in the 3D era. But with how much Liberty City and Los Santos have both changed between eras, making each universe separate and rebooting the franchise probably does make more sense. And given the fact that each game has a different protagonist and mostly different central characters with some overlap here and there, it made things much easier to reboot. It's not like these games have been about the same exact people with each one. By comparison, titles like Max Payne and Metal Gear Solid have always featured the same central characters throughout one long, overarching story, no matter what engine the game is running on or what year it came out. We've known Max since he was much more geometric and smirking, and we've known Solid and the Big Boss since they were 2D sprites. But with the variety of stories Rockstar have told with each GTA, not everything has to be in one universe. The worlds in GTA are more than just some remarkable maps and models. They have history and layered components that build upon each other to create the illusion of a real, living world. You feel like these worlds were living before you entered them and like they'll still be going after you leave. Hey you! Yeah, you. Are you tired of getting blown up by Mark II's when you're just trying to mind your own business? Well, maybe it's time you unplugged from GTA Online and plugged in to Grand RP. Grand RP is an awesome RP server for GTA 5 players. Not only does this server look great, but it also plays great too, with over 250 DLC cars, loads of missions, and a community that's actually fun to play with, unlike any GTA Online lobby ever. They've spent the time to build this server up. They've got amazingly detailed interiors. You can become a police officer and enforce the law, or just get a typical job, because there's a huge variety of choices. If that doesn't interest you, become a criminal and try to steal someone else's car and sell it, but you'll probably end up in jail. Join or create a family with your friends and gain access to special missions, missions like robbing a bank or infiltrating an aircraft carrier. Join Grand Roleplay today through the link in the description below and get in-game bonuses. Grand RP has been an awesome sponsor and their server is a lot of fun, please check it out. Fictional vehicle brands were created by Rockstar for multiple reasons. Here's an interview from Killas with one of the founders of Rockstar, Jamie King. When asked why they decided not to license any real vehicle brand, he responded, It gets very expensive, right, and royalties. And it is a tremendous amount of effort and work, both sides, right? Every track, there's the mechanical rights, the right, the publishing rights, there's, the, there's always something. And no, I would, wouldn't be surprised if part of the logic was we don't need it. And I think, you know, there's a very 
strong desire to own all the content, have it as much of it be original and and not like be beholden to anyone for anything in GTA. It's just so that it can be everything that we want it to be. And to and also to ensure that the game is the star. The game is always the star. Rockstar dodged the bullet of licensing fees and restrictions. The restrictions could have been detrimental to a game like GTA in the first place. These companies don't want their brands associated with damage or police chases in most cases. Considering the fact that you can run people over in GTA games, it would seem unrealistic that we'd see a company agree to be seen in that light. On Twitter, a fan asked where Toyota was in the new Need for Speed game, and they responded, We're not there. You can find our cars in GT Sport, which doesn't promote illegal street racing. Need for Speed responded appropriately, and the following day, Toyota deleted their original tweet and posted a five-part statement on it. Making original vehicle brands was a necessary move for Rockstar, and it pays off well for the universe. A common theme you'll find with almost everything in GTA is that their brands parody the real world. They make fun of anything and everything, with no limits. A good example of this is the in-game vehicle brand Nagasaki. This brand is based on the real-life Japanese Yamaha and Kawasaki brands. They named their fictional brand Nagasaki as a reference to one of the two cities nuked in World War II just because the real brands are Japanese. Cars are a major component of a game about cars, so you could naturally expect that they'd make fake car brands. But you probably wouldn't expect them to make everything else they make. Red Bull energy drinks? They've got junk energy drinks. Sprunk, a reference to Sprite, which also has a cell phone wallpaper in GTA 4. These drinks have funny ads too, which can be heard or seen in different ways. Whether it's Electrolyte, Sludgy, Pibwasser, or Lager Beer, Rockstar has filled the world with drinks that don't just refill your health or make you drunk, but add to the world in ways that enhance the experience and make the world authentic. In San Andreas, within the first few missions, you go get pizza at the well-stacked pizza company and make a huge order at Cluck and Bell. Companies like Burger Shot can be seen across the different games and players can go inside and eat their food to regain their health. Rockstar maintains their sense of humor with these food brands and parodies like Substandard, Burger Shot, and Pizza This. These parody names act as a commentary on the real world just as much as funny puns. Some places in the GTA universe allow the player to make changes to themselves like hair salons, tattoo shops, gyms, and clothing stores. Others exist just to make the world seem more real. Fast food places, convenience stores, banks, casinos, police stations, hospitals, underground train stations, internet cafes, airports, car dealerships, and more. Locations like these all give off the atmosphere you'd expect with sounds and characters inhabiting the places with multiple animations. When you enter a bar in GTA, you can play pool or the arcade machine. These features make the location feel less like something Rockstar just threw together and more like a flushed out feature and environment. These locations, products, brands, and places are all referenced in multiple forms throughout the universe, be it on a TV, on a radio, on a sign, at a store, or at a vending machine. Despite the franchise having two major reboots with new stories and histories being told in each one, the in-game radio stations have always maintained some level of consistency, starting all the way back with GTA 1 and 2. Both games featured Head Radio, an adult contemporary radio station which would go on to be heard again in GTA 3 and Liberty City stories. San Andreas brought us Radio Los Santos and WCTR, both of which would return in GTA 5. And Vice City's V-Rock was mentioned briefly in GTA 4 during an ad for Laszlo's Integrity 2.0. Come to think of it now, Laszlo might actually be the most consistent thing about radio in GTA. Because he was only hired by Rockstar in real life during GTA 3's development, he didn't make an appearance in any game until GTA 3. But thanks to every subsequent radio station that he's been featured on in nearly every GTA release since then, if you were to listen to each appearance in chronological order, you can actually follow this guy's fictionalized radio career. From his days as a jumpy intern, to when his boss gets fired and he gets the job two years later, and then when he gets fired from that, he winds up worming his way into hosting a nationally syndicated entertainment talk show. Six years later, he's in Liberty City taking calls from citizens, only to find out he was fired again a few years after, and a now desperate Laszlo creates a startup radio venture which lifts him back up into the limelight and gets him a job hosting one of the most popular talent shows in America. The entire time also becoming seemingly more and more unstable as the years go on. Quite a career, huh?
There are nearly 170 radio stations across all GTA titles. These stations range from having licensed music, music made in-house, and talk shows. Advertisements for in-game products and brands can be heard throughout these stations. These advertisements are over the top and hilarious. They typically mention things you can see in the game world, further solidifying the illusion that this is a shared world. For instance, Laszlo can be heard interviewing citizens on the street during his show and talks about what streets he's on. My favorite radio station in all of the GTA games is Radio X, hosted by Sage. It's interesting that while this radio station is in GTA San Andreas, Sage's name is found with a radio tower emblem in the Vinewood Walk of Fame. Religion has been an aspect of the GTA franchise as early as GTA 2. In GTA 2, the only way to save the game was by going to a Jesus Saves Church, or also known as You Save when the light flickers. It cost $50,000 to be saved at these locations, likely poking fun at how churches often ask for donations to be saved. For the rest of the 2D universe, churches are seen throughout cities merely as scenery. Many both real and fictional religions exist in the different universes of GTA. You'll find members of these religions and standing outside some of these locations dressed in dress clothes depending on the time. The most popular religion is the Epsilon program, a Scientology parody cult. The Epsilon Center is one prominent location in Rockford Hills, Los Santos. The Epsilon program is led by Chris Formage, first heard in a 1992 interview by Laszlo Jones on the radio show Entertaining America in GTA San Andreas. Chris Formage, founder of the Epsilon program, is here. Hello, Chris. Kiflam, brother, brother. <laughs> What does that mean, man? So, Epsilonism, is it a load of crap, or is it the future? Well, what do you think, Laszlo? I don't know. Well, I mean, I I, I grow my own religion. <laughs> That's why I don't know, is I'm kind of spaced out. I mean, but you guys run around chanting lip balm. It's Kiflam. Well, whatever. Both sound addictive to me. The religion's main deity is Kiflam, and members follow his 12 tenets. These tenets that were established in the 3D universe have been kept in the HD universe. Rockstar has explained why these tenets are the same. They said, the Epsilon program does not exist in just one time or place. Also, the first time you die in GTA Online, you see Chris Formage floating, as he explains that you can join him in watching, where no one can harm you. He's basically just explaining passive mode to you. It is the greatest pleasure on Earth. And trust me, I've lain with a multitude of women. The altruist cult consists of hostile, old men living in a compound of wooden buildings secluded from society. There are two articles from the Daily Globe that talk about the disappearances of hitchhikers in the area. Trevor can deliver people to their camp, where they're most likely eaten because they're cannibals. The cult believes that all generations after theirs are the cause of all the problems in the world. All GTA characters are canon. They all inhabit their respective universes. For example, Claude, the main character of GTA 3, makes an appearance in San Andreas. Catalina, the villain in GTA 3, also plays a role in San Andreas. Claude and Catalina are seen together in a cutscene in San Andreas, as San Andreas predates the events of GTA 3. Packy from GTA 4 makes an appearance in GTA 5 and even mentions Nico. What is interesting is my biggest job the Bank of Liberty City. I ran the crew. It was me, my brother Derek, God rest his soul, my pal Michael, God rest his soul, and another boy, Nico, who's probably dead too. In the intro to The Ballad of Gay Tony, you can see that Luis was in the bank during Nico's heist all along. Then, as he walks home, he passes the lost and damned. The story of the diamonds interconnects Nico, Luis, and Johnny. The three stories that take place in Liberty City are actually what inspired Rockstar to make GTA V a three-character narrative. There even are a few instances where HD characters mention 3D characters. While the events discussed might not be canon to HD characters' lives, many events and characters seem to carry across universes, meaning these universes act as mirror dimensions where they kind of are and aren't the same universes. Many characters that you can interact with can be found throughout San Andreas and Liberty City. These characters are more than simple NPCs walking around because they activate many missions. You have the option to go on little adventures with random characters and side characters, making the world feel more interactive. When you switch characters in GTA 5, you're dropped in the middle of whatever the character is doing, as if they're living their own lives without you. What happened to American mainstream movie making? Your friends will call you and ask if you want to hang out, Roman will ask if you want to go bowling, and you can take girls out on dates. 
In every major GTA up until 5, players would be limited to a specific section of the map until they progressed through the story enough to unlock the other areas. Each time, there would be an in-game excuse for why players can't access other parts of the map, and it always related to some kind of major event occurring. In GTA 3, a bomb goes off in the Callahan Bridge, destroying a large portion of it. This one's obvious because we actually see this happen right at the beginning. The construction of the Porter Tunnel was also not finished by this point due to numerous construction delays, and the Shoreside Lift Bridge suffered from a mechanical failure. Three years earlier, when Liberty City stories took place, ongoing bridge and tunnel construction as well as a strike by ferry terminal workers also prevented us from leaving Portland at the start. In Vice City, the bridges were closed due to a hurricane warning, which is later lifted once you get far enough into the story. In San Andreas, the bridges were closed due to a rather recent earthquake. Presumably, this would have been done to check the structural integrity of the bridges to make sure whether they're going to be safe to use again. Some of the earthquake destruction can actually be seen in San Fierro. This is most likely a reference to the real-life earthquake which occurred in 1989. It may have been three years before San Andreas actually takes place, but it was a prominent enough event that I think this is where they would have gotten the idea from. And then you have GTA 4. This time, it's the threat of terrorism that causes all the bridges and tunnels to be shut down. No city in America has felt the painful effects of the war on terror like Liberty City. Government intelligence sources believe that 9 in 10 terrorists find Liberty City the most desirable target in the country. Watch out, people. Outside a methadone clinic in Port Tudor, Mike Whiteley, Weasel News. Even within the game, it's referred to as a pretty extreme measure to take, but it's one that their fictional governments felt was the right thing to do in the face of a potentially major national security threat. While this fictional threat does remind me a little of a real-life foiled attack from the 90s called the Landmarks Plot, in which two tunnels and the George Washington Bridge were among several other New York area targets, the most obvious inspiration was would have been the post-9-11 atmosphere in the U.S. at the time. For several years after the attacks, there was a period of hypervigilance among citizens, and this is something that's referenced numerous times in-game. Some kind of major tragedy was even briefly referenced on the radio in GTA 4, during a political attack ad. And while they didn't go into detail about exactly what happened, it's clear that in the GTA world there was some kind of major event, most likely a large-scale terrorist attack, and it clearly had its effects on Liberty City for a few years after. Several major story events are even referred to by the government and media in the game as acts of terrorism, despite the obvious links to organized crime or government corruption. Whether it was the explosion at the garage in Bohan, or a shooting at an oil refinery in Alderney, or the assassination of Thomas Stubbs' uncle, several missions in GTA 4 even have you performing a few counterterrorism operations. So despite the fact that some of what's referenced in the game in terms of terrorism fears is done so in parody, they still managed to weave this into the story while showing that this is unfortunately a very big part of life in Liberty City. Being a fictional world, Rockstar had to create fictional states and cities. They based these states and cities on real-world cities and locations. States like San Andreas and Liberty City State represent California and New York. Cities like San Fierro and Las Venturas represent San Francisco and Las Vegas. Each place perfectly encapsulates the landmarks and atmosphere of the settings they're based on. They didn't stop at landmarks, though. They went further than anyone else does and even named individual streets. When you listen or browse any media in the game world, they likely mention a street name once or twice. When Nico calls emergency services or takes a cab, he calls out the street name. As I mentioned earlier, the Vinewood Walk of Fame is plastered with famous people in the GTA universes. I don't know of any games that aren't RPGs with this much built-in lore that all cross-reference and interconnect so perfectly. These places look nearly identical to our own world, but they have their own spin, mostly based in parody. The Statue of Liberty is called the Statue of Happiness, and the lady has a coffee cup in her hand. The 3D model of the Statue of Happiness was named Stat Hilberty 1 in the game files, based on Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State who investigated Rockstar Games' hot coffee debacle, and suggested that new regulations be put on video games. One cool thing about the world of Grand Theft Auto is how every location featured gets its own fictional name. 
Even though a majority of places featured are all based on locations that actually exist, calling them something new adds to the world that Rockstar has crafted within the franchise. It was definitely a chance for them to be a little more creative, even though they're designing these after real life places. And coming up with street names, which GTA 4 introduced, must have been one of the more fun tasks that someone could have had while working on the game. One thing I found especially interesting is how they named the horizontal streets in Algonquin. In real life in Manhattan, the east-west streets are numbered, and as you go further uptown, the number goes higher. So you'll have, say, 81st Street, 82nd Street, 83rd Street, and so on. But given how condensed Algonquin is, giving these streets numbers would only get you to about 24 streets. Doesn't seem like a very big number if they're trying to convey that this is actually a large city. And this is GTA, so they had to come up with something different anyway. So they chose instead to have the names of these streets running in alphabetical order. And the names themselves are all minerals, running from amethyst to xenotime. Pretty cool, huh? Kinda like how cities and states have their own made-up names in the GTA world, Landmarks based on real-life famous landmarks are also given their own names. For example, in real life, we know that big pointy building in San Francisco as the Transamerica Pyramid, but in San Fierro, it's quite literally known as the Big Pointy Building, voted the pointiest building in San Andreas. Also in San Fierro, the Gantt Bridge is the GTA Universe equivalent of the Golden Gate Bridge, with some rather interesting facts behind it. The bridge is not only big, but it took up a whole 1.27 megabytes of disk space in 2004. I wonder how much space the Rotterdam Tower takes up. There's no sign stating interesting technical facts for it, but we do know according to the lore that it was built in 1931, the same year the Empire State Building was built in real life. Also like in real life, it was once the tallest building in the world until other much taller buildings ended up being built in the years that followed, making it seem quite short in comparison. The GTA game worlds are so packed with content that Rockstar ran out of space, so they had to pack more content into virtual areas too. In GTA 4, you could go to internet cafes or use any computers you'd see to access the internet. Rockstar made more than 100 websites for GTA 4 and around 80 for GTA 5. In GTA 5, you could now access these websites and send emails right from your phone. The world even has their own news sources like Weasel News, Liberty Tree, and the Daily Globe. You could buy vehicles on the phone and have them delivered to your house as well. Franklin can even win a t-shirt after completing a multi-stage test for the Children of the Mountain Cult on the thechildrenofthemountain.com. The phone actually worked as a phone. You could call emergency services or a taxi. They even had certain phone numbers you could dial where someone would pick up. In GTA 4, you could call Zit when you heard a song you liked and they would tell you the name of the song over the phone. Your phone also had the ability to customize ringtones and wallpapers if you bought them on the in-game internet. GTA 4 and 5 both have television channels. The channels host hours of content. Ricky Gervais and Cat Williams did many stand-up routines on the Weasel channel as well. At the end, the credits say that you can go see them at the actual location with the actual street names and watch them live. GTA 5 has movie theaters and you can visit them and watch three different movies. When GTA 4 first came out, I had no idea that you could actually watch TV in the game. I must have missed it from some of the gameplay previews that were coming out close to launch. So when I got to play it for the first time and I saw that you had the option to sit and watch TV in Roman's apartment, I was amazed. You had three main channels, Weasel, CNT, and the Public Broadcasting Corporation. Weasel is obviously based on Fox. Public Broadcasting Corporation is supposed to be PBS, and CNT kinda sounds like the cable network TNT, even though I think it's just supposed to be a generic parody of every channel that has three letters in its name. While there was only a limited amount of shows to watch on these channels, they still ended up being not just entertaining, but world-building as well. We can watch all the crazy stuff that counts as entertainment and news in GTA's world. And the program A History of Liberty City really dives deep into the settlement of this fictional place. Is it stuff that average players would take to or really care about? Maybe, or maybe not. But the fact that it's there speaks volumes about the world building that Rockstar had in mind with GTA 4. 
Many fans probably used to find it frustrating that neither Claude nor Tommy could swim. This frustration might have especially been prominent if you played San Andreas first. You'd go from being able to easily swim to shore, to finding that accidentally driving off a bridge or walking off a dock is a death sentence. But the people at Rockstar were clever enough to come up with reasons for the lack of swimming in these games anyway. According to an article from the Liberty Tree, as seen in a promotional website for GTA 3, an oil spill occurred in Liberty City sometime in early 2001. This resulted in everything from the city's tap water being polluted, to the occasional flash fires breaking out on the surface of the water. While an environmental disaster like this sounds pretty bad, the government stated that it's really no big deal just as long as you don't drink the tap water or go for a swim. Hilariously, this is actually a little more plausible than what the excuse was in Vice City. According to the instruction manual, shark attacks are common in the waters around Vice City, and you're left with a warning to stay out of the water to avoid any possibility of a shark attack happening. But besides that, the water in Vice City still looks quite clear compared to the oil-drenched waters of Liberty. Maybe Tommy is just deathly afraid of sharks, and when he falls into the water, he just freezes in fear. Back when San Andreas was still relatively new, a lot of players ended up becoming virtual UFO hunters, chasing after those lights in the sky that were probably just supposed to be airplane lights. But with the UFO-themed bar in the desert and Area 69, I guess I could see why a lot of us, when we were younger, could think that maybe there really was something out there. I'm sure people really took to that UFO sighting map of the bar and probably went to each of these places looking for UFOs. None of this would ever show up, of course, because like Bigfoot, they weren't programmed in. But by GTA 5, this all changed. While Bigfoot wasn't actually Bigfoot, there are UFOs. One is almost like a 1950s B-movie style UFO with the FIB logo on the side. And the other one looks a little more like something out of Independence Day. Either way, I take it that aliens are now canonical in the GTA universe. The Zombotech Corporation building can be found in San Fierro. A giant DNA model sits at the center of the structure, and different signs throughout the building reference zombie labs and underground bunkers. It's likely that this is a reference to the Resident Evil movie, as it was popular during this game's development, and the signs look exactly like the hive under Raccoon City. The GTA universe has a believable society. There are employees working at their jobs, wearing their uniforms. Citizens walking, shopping, or enjoying different hobbies. Gangs have history and hold over different parts of the city. In San Andreas, you fight for Grove Street's control against enemy gangs like the Balas. The police, hospital, and firemen have their own buildings. Lawyers have their own offices. Politicians fill the airwaves, television screens, and billboards with campaign ads. There's even a president in the GTA universe, Joe Lawton. When it comes to policy, he wrote into law the Jingoism Act. It was also renewed sometime in 2008 by Congress by his request. The law allows law enforcement agencies to spy on citizens. It also requires citizens to speak well of America. Some people may think it's stupid to pay attention to the details like the street names or the storefronts, but I'd argue that it's the very element, the very charm of the franchise that made it sell as the most successful media title of all time. Not everyone will know every single detail, but there's always something to soak up or learn about just by experiencing the game. It's the detail of an entire fictional world, collected and pressed into a virtual game world. The people, the brands, and the experiences stick with you. This isn't a yearly release. This isn't a carbon copy world with copy and pasted buildings all around to fill the void and fluff up the landscape. It's a crafted, designed, and perfectly executed world, a reality that we can immerse ourselves in. To me, GTA isn't about shooting or running NPCs over, as any dim-witted news reporter against video games would have you think. To me, it's always been about experiencing the world. My mom and I would listen to the radio stations in a parked car and just laugh at Laszlo's interviews. I would drive around San Andreas just listening to the songs on Radio X and explore the different cities. Or I'd ride down Mount Chiliad in a bike. Even if you're just driving around in GTA, you're still going to find yourself immersed in this fictional world that Rockstar carefully crafted. I used to love just cruising around, listening to the radio, seeing all the storefronts and billboards passing by, and just relaxing. Just going for a casual drive, you know? Which is what I like doing now in real life, too. But within a game, the amount of detail packed into each GTA really makes it stand out amongst other titles. 
especially in the past titles, which gave us more detail than what most other open-world games could do at the time. This is part of what made GTA so appealing to begin with, and it really helps when you're revisiting these games, too. GTA is a game of exploration, and Rockstar has the ability to build worlds worth exploring. Check out Badger Goodger's channel. He's tremendously knowledgeable on GTA and makes awesome videos. He's almost at 100,000 subscribers and he deserves it way more than I do, so please go see what he makes and subscribe to him. You won't regret it if you're a fan of GTA.